Valley Connection is brought to you by RPS Video Productions. Welcome to this month's edition of the Valley Connection, a monthly show designed to keep you informed of our Valley's issues, concerns, and events, and brought to you by RPS Video Recording Services. I'm Nancy Lopez. And I'm Cesaria Hernandez. And Nancy, I am back and well this month. I'm I missed so glad. you. I missed you. It's not the same. <laughs> but listen to you. I know. I know. I think you're going to do most of the talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, I will take the lead right now, and we will start off this month's show going up to Riley's Farm. That is such a fabulous place to take students and to have an afternoon with the family. Yes, it's so beautiful. It reminds me of Tennessee, where I used to live. Uh, it's gorgeous, <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. And we will have our Student of the Month segment again. That's right, some very deserving young people. And then I get to have Linda Krupa, who is a city councilwoman for uh, the city of Hemet. That's right, and she has lots of exciting things coming up. You don't want to miss this because some of it has to do with our Hemet Valley Mall. That's right. <laughs> yeah, very exciting. So you're going to want to stay tuned. We'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back. Now, Nancy, we're going to head on out to Riley's Farm to get a taste of our colonial past. Riley's Farm to get a taste of colonial life right here in Southern California. Let's see what all is going on here today. Salvant, living historian up here at Riley's Farm. And Jeffrey, what have we got going on back here? Well, today we're taking part in the adventures of the old world, and we're making apple pies right now. It's one of uh, seven different activities we have on the weekends, and we're just starting on making our pies. We've rolled out dough, and we're about to begin putting the pie filling in. Now, these folks get to come up here, make these pies, bake them, and take them home with them. Is that correct? Indeed, indeed. I see we've got everything all rolled out. What's the next step? The next step is to mash these Granny Smith apples a bit more so they mix with the brown sugar and ingredients in the bowl and start to bleed off a bit of sap. And then we'll start placing them into the pie tins. Paul Gummerson, dad and fifth grade teacher, is here with his family. My goodness, why is it important, you think, to share these type of activities with your kids? I think it's one thing to read about something in a history book and entirely a different thing altogether than to uh, participate in it.
I'm here with Jim Riley. And my goodness, Jim, your family actually bought this farm back in 1986. But I understand your colonial program has only been in effect for about the last 12 years, and it is incredible. Well, we, uh, we, yeah, we, we enjoy it. We have about 70,000 kids a year who come out, and we uh, perform reenactments of the Revolutionary War and uh, constitutional debates that went on in the uh, 18th century. I understand that you kind of got this started uh, with some ideas from some fifth grade teachers, correct? Right, they had the best idea. They, uh, we had dinner theater going on in our public house behind us, and they asked if we could do a program for fifth graders. And when I was a kid, we didn't go on that many field trips, just museums. And, and so we put on this, this traumatic uh, reenactment of the Revolutionary War, and it became very popular. We see about 70,000 fifth graders a year. So uh, we have uh, five, 600 kids a day here, and uh, we do gold rush programs, and Civil War programs, Revolutionary War. We see families who want to U-pick uh, strawberries and raspberries and apples and pears, and we serve uh, 18th century meals in the tavern behind us. So. Yeah, well, I was noticing that you do have the lovely, lovely restaurant there. I understand that you actually built all of these buildings here on the property just for the purpose of bringing some colonial life here to Southern California. Right, right. Well, you know, I, we used to get kidded about that, and then we toured the East Coast, and we see, you know, Western uh, steakhouses in Pennsylvania, so we figured if they can do cowboy out in Pennsylvania and New England, then we can do colonial back out here in California for, for people who don't get won't get to see Williamsburg or places on the East Coast. So. You have a lot of actors, I know, here, and a lot of historical type of people. Well, we have our, our typical staff member is a half historian, half actor. And, uh, and we, we ha you have to interpret the past. There's a lot that you have to read between the lines. And, and so uh, we, we have some people who just love, love to present history in a fun, engaging, humorous way. You'll see some of them today, I imagine. So. <laughs> well, wonderful. My goodness. If you haven't been out here to Riley's Farm, you've got to come. There is so much to do. Candle making, butter churning, picking fresh fruit, loads and loads of things for your family to do out here. actually two candles that were twisted together and then dipped. What do you think we make our wax from? It comes from tallow. Does anyone know what tallow is? It's rendered animal fat. We've had so much fun out here at Riley's Farms. And look at these strawberries. Oh my goodness, they are so sweet and so delectable. Get on out here and pick yourself some. Now, we're gonna be right back with more of the Valley Connection right after this. I really like my golf bag skate. Now that I'm older, this 60 pound bag's pretty heavy. Now I can get it to the cart without any pain to my back or knees. The reliable, adjustable golf bag skate. Powder coated steel with durable wheels is made in San Jacinto, California. I love my golf bag skate. Since my bag is so heavy and I'm so little, it makes it hard for me to get it from the car to the cart. It allows me just to get out here and I'm ready to play. Roll your heavy golf bag with ease. Visit our website at thegolfbagskate.com. We at RPS went out to enjoy the annual Taste of the Valley held at Golden Village Palms RV Resort. Live entertainment and sampling of different cuisines, the Taste of the Valley was held to better inform our winter visitors of what the local businesses and the San Jacinto Valley has to offer. A resort full of active seniors, this park alone has approximately 20,000 visitors yearly that spend their time here during the winter months. Welcome back, snowbirds. 
We wanted to find out more of why they considered the San Jacinto Valley a destination area. My name is Michelle Pagden, and this is my husband, Ross. We're from Courtney, Vancouver Island, British Columbia, and this is our third year here. Now, to begin with, I was retired, Ross was not, and so he would drive the fifth wheel down here, stay for a week, I would stay for two months, and then he'd come back and pick me up. <laughs> so we've done that for two years. This year, it's a little different. He gets to stay with me because he's retired now. And so for three months, we're living in a fifth wheel, enjoying volleyball, the three pools, the three hot tubs, our friends on Fringe Street, golf, anywhere we want to golf. What else, dear? Well, anything. We've anything. Got, uh, Pickleball. Texas Hold'em. Texas Hold'em. Hold we're doing it all. I turn 55 next month, and we are having a grand, grand time. <laughs> Lots of friends. For the past seven years, returning winter visitor, retired video producer Wayne Carlo from Victoria, British Columbia, helped me out with a few interviews, snowbird to snowbird. Here are some clips. We have with us here a, 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 a snowbird, right? Snowbird. All right, so tell us who you are and uh, where you're from and why you come here. I'm Dave Olenberger I'm from uh, Vancouver Island, British Columbia, and uh, I come for the blue sky and sunshine, volleyball, golf, and just have a great time. And how many years have you been coming here, Dave? We've been coming here 10 years, and before that we were in Arizona, a little too dry. So this is lovely climate here. Hi, my name is Shirley Hewlin, and I've been coming to Golden Village Palms since 2001. In my estimation, there is absolutely nowhere else in California to winter except Golden Village Palms. It, it has been absolutely fabulous. I live on Vancouver Island, but I'm originally from Newfoundland, and oh gosh, I love, absolutely love this place. And um, what else do you like about the uh, location of Hemet? Well, it's not as windy and it's not as hot as Palm Springs, so it's great, great climate, and uh, yeah, it's just a nice central location to everything. Uh, you know, San Diego, Los Angeles, Palm Springs. So it's great for, uh, you know, doing day trips and just enjoying, uh, enjoying the area. I had a chance to visit with a fun couple that we had met the first time they were here, four years ago, and they have been back every year since. I'm Sigrid. And I'm Kurt. And we are from British Columbia, Canada. And we like to come south in the winter time as a snowbird. And in the summertime, my husband is running a gentleman farm and I run a bed and breakfast up in Canada. Now tell us about your eggs. Oh, when, <laughs> when I set the table for my guests, I always serve boiled eggs and my little eggs have a little tube on top. And everybody likes it. So when I have guests from America or Canada, they are crazy about my ex with a toque. They take pictures, <laughs> lots of pictures. Yeah. Now, now, when you come down here, what are some of your favorite things you like to do? Dancing, Zumba, boot camp, water volleyball, and pickle, pickleball. Pickleball is what we do. And uh, we are so active here, so when we come home, we need a vacation because we're totally worn out. Snowbirds describe this RV resort as a cruise ship on land. We're going to let Wayne Carlo close it out. Why do you come down here, Jim? Uh, because it's nice and warm and the friendly people and the city of Hemet. I really like the city of Hemet. It's, uh, it's a very nice place to uh, visit and uh, spend some time in. Okay, and um, you already told us you're here for four, four years, right? Uh, yes, this is, this is my fourth year. Okay, thanks very much, Jim. You can go now. <laughs> and welcome back. I'm so excited to have with me Linda Krupa, who is a city council member 
for the city of Hemet. And Linda, there is so much to talk about. Thank you for being on our show. You're welcome, Nancy. We're going to start with the economy. How is the economy doing in Hemet? Well, it is rebounding. It's not as fast as what we would like, but it is coming back. And just uh, you know, one statistic uh, for the construction in 2013 was actually 15, 57% higher than it was in 2012. So we're looking at 2014 as being a whole lot better because we have a whole lot of things that are working them their way through the mm -hmm. system. Uh, I give you just for example, uh, Gosh Auto out at the Auto Mall. They are in plan check for a 28,000 plus square foot new Chevy dealership and service center. Uh, we have uh, the Stetson Crossings, which is down on Stetson and Sanderson. Uh, they are going forward. They're trying to get their anchor tenants lined up so that they can actually break ground. We've done the infrastructure there. The Regent property out on what used to be Garrett Ranch uh, mm -hmm. between Sanderson and uh, Warren Road on the north side of Florida. It's a 200 acre mixed use commercial and residential project. Mm -hmm. And they are also working their way through mm -hmm. the planning department. Uh, some existing developments that we've had that were kind of put on hold, uh, McSweeney Farms, south of town. Yeah, that's been like nothing happening for nothing a long time. Nothing happening and they are now building more homes, which oh, is really right, good. Yeah. And the Pepper Tree Project on... It's on Costin. I think, I yes, you're yeah, right. Costin. It's up on Costin. Uh, that has come out of receivership and the new owners, they are progressing also through that. So that's exciting just to yes, have those it's projects a beautiful go property. forward. Yeah. It is. It absolutely is. And then on, you know, on the, the side where it's more involvement from the community and mm -hmm. shopping, mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, Tractor Supply is they have they're out of plan check and I guess they actually got their building permit and they're going to be building between Coston and Sanderson behind Target okay. uh, a 20,000 square foot building there and it was it was interesting when they decided to come to town we said ooh tractor supply <laughs> in Hemet <laughs> yeah I know I was kind of thinking yeah, that but but you know we're surrounded by agricultural and and mm -hmm. horse farms mm -hmm. and and country things so this I'm sure it's more than just tractors. <laughs> it is more than just tractors, and it's it'll be the only one, the first one in Southern California. So we're hoping it will be extremely successful. Uh, we also, uh, good good news, Hobby Lobby has actually signed a 10-year lease at the mall. You know what that is going to be? <laughs> I know, we're all excited about that one. But yes. what a plus for that mall. Oh, exactly. They they are going to go into the Gottschalks and mm -hmm. uh, to be an anchor tenant. 50,000 square foot of Hobby Lobby stuff. <laughs> and I have never been in a Hobby Lobby, but... You know, I haven't either, but I've heard <laughs> once you go, it's good stuff. You got to go back. <laughs> Absolutely good stuff. And then also uh, Jersey Mike's, which is a sandwich shop, mm -hmm. uh, is going to be opening on down in the Wentworth uh, Sanderson area. Then I have a list of things that are happening downtown. Uh, shooters. Mm -hmm. it has now, opened. explain what Shooters, shooters is. is. Shooters is. It's an, not guns, right? No, it's not <laughs> guns. It's an actual pool hall, and it's beautiful. It is absolutely yeah. beautiful. Tons of tables. They have a restaurant and a bar on one side. Mm -hmm. And you'll be happy to know I'm organizing ladies' night out, shooting <laughs> pool. We can be as bad as we want to be, but okay. we'll all have fun. So they're downtown. The Valley Chronicle has moved mm -hmm. back down on Florida Avenue, and they have an information center in the, in the front of their building also, which is really good. And then on Harvard Street, uh, La Boutique is a, uh, a dress shop, mm -hmm. and she also has a wedding gown museum, in, a Victorian wedding gown museum in there that is just awesome. And Shine, uh, it's a dance studio, and, and like a, it's not really a second-hand store, because that's it's mm -hmm. just got good stuff in there, right, good yeah. collectible things. Hemet Valley Art Association has moved down there. There's a new beauty salon down there. Brickyard Restaurant, mm -hmm. a new restaurant called Sweet Life, and the hydroponic store has moved to a new location. And they if you haven't been in there. Job. Yes, I have. Oh, yes, it's I just have. awesome. You can grow 
things. I mean, you can grow everything with no <laughs> <Exactly>. dirt. <laughs> it's really wonderful. Exactly. But there's life coming back to the downtown. It's so exciting yes. to hear. Yeah. yeah. Well, we definitely want to have you back on because I know there's going to be a lot more to talk about. Oh, there is. But thank you so much, Linda, for sharing that information with us. And we're excited. I so. am too. And, you know, it, it's getting better. Yeah. And we need that. We need that hope. We do. <laughs> we absolutely do. So thank you very much, Thank Nancy. you for being with us. And we'll be right back with more of the Valley Connection after this. The San Jacinto Chamber of Commerce and the Hemet San Jacinto Valley Chamber of Commerce are proud to recognize academic excellence in our community with this month's chosen Students of the Month from the Hemet and San Jacinto School Districts. West Valley recognizes Cassidy Sawyer as this month's Student of the Month. Cassidy is known for his intellectual capabilities, his maturity and commanding presence, which is uncommon for someone so young. He was selected to participate on the Riverside County Championship Academic Team in the spring of 2012. His dedication to the program helped secure West Valley a fifth consecutive win in the competition. He became a natural leader and is serving as team captain this year. Known for his motivation to get involved and contribute to school culture, he has participated in cross country, football, track and field, and activities like the Solar Cup competition. He manages to do all of this while enrolled in numerous AP courses, all while maintaining a 4.07 GPA throughout high school. Cassidy hopes to have a career in biological research. Congratulations, Cassidy. Mountain Heights High School recognizes Selena Lamphier as their student of the month. Selena was doing well at San Jacinto High School when she moved into the Hemet Unified School District area in her sophomore year. As a student at Hemet High, she didn't do well and fell behind. Selena returned to San Jacinto High School and struggled to catch up. She finally transferred to Mountain Heights Academy late in the fall of her junior year, where she completed a portion of the credits needed for the year. Entering her senior year, Selena is focused and determined to graduate with her class and to continue on to pursue a career in law enforcement completing nearly a full year's credit in just one semester. She now has just 21 credits remaining to graduate. Congratulations, Selena. San Jacinto High School recognizes Myra Tenori as their Student of the Month. With Myra's dedication, determination, work ethic, and motivation as a student in the AVID program, it is obvious that education is very important to her. She has worked hard throughout her high school years so that she can attend college after graduation and better herself by earning a degree. Myra has come from a difficult background as she has grown up in foster homes. Currently, she is with a loving family and calls her parents mom and dad. With a warm and positive attitude and overcoming hardships which have made her a stronger person, Myra's GPA is a 3.8. She is also currently involved in San Jacinto High School Color Guard, Youth Advisory Council, and Help Make a Change. Her teachers describe her as not only a great student, but she is also a good person with a good heart. Congratulations, Myra. Hemet High School recognizes Chris Gutierrez for their Student of the Month. Nominated because of his hard work and dedication to the school and community, Chris is currently the president of the Hemet FFA chapter Southern California FFA Region President and is very active in the National FFA Organization and Nationwide Youth Agricultural Leadership Organization. 
He dedicates his time in informing the community about agricultural education and the FFA. Chris interacts with members of the community every Sunday when they come by the school farm and buy farm fresh produce from the school garden. He is an advocate leader representing Hemet High School nationally and with other service-based organizations like the Kiwanis Club. Chris is currently serving on the State FFA Executive Committee that helps with decisions affecting FFA membership throughout California. He has been a member of the various career development event judging teams in the areas of horticulture and specialty animal competing at the state level. Chris also was involved with the Washington Leadership Conference National Day of Service, working with Habitat for Humanity. Congratulations, Chris. Takwitz High School recognizes Helena Shane Jaleo Agon for their Student of the Month. Jelena is a hardworking student who has shown interest in and a strong aptitude toward technical subjects. She seems genuinely to enjoy problem solving. In class, she participates actively, often asking pithy questions and pursuing points that may not have been fully explored in class discussions. She has received multiple academic awards, Science Student of the Year, Foreign Language Student of the Year, Perfect Attendance, and Academic Excellence while obtaining a 3.9 GPA. Combined with her strong academic performance, Jelena's enthusiasm will enhance her abilities in obtaining a college degree. Congratulations, Jelena. And congratulations to all of the students for this month that have achieved so much. A very special thank you to all of the sponsors that have helped support this program. We'll be right back with more of the Valley Connection right after these messages. And welcome back as we close the show. And we have many exciting events that's happening over the next few weeks right here in our valley. And the first one for you ladies out there, they are having an old-fashioned Victorian tea and fashion show. And it's going to be held on March 29th at the Hemet Public Library. And it's being brought to you by the Hemet Library Foundation. So you can go on their website for more information. And also check out the DVAC website. There are a ton of things going on out there. They have a Norman Rockwell exhibition. They have Murano glass. They have Mexican art. And they have something very special on the third Sunday of February. That's right. They're going to be honoring Black History Month. And they have Marshall Hawkins performing. So you don't want to miss that. So go to their website for all the information. And we want to welcome back our snowbirds. Welcome back to the Valley. That's right. I hope you're enjoying this wonderful sunshine. I know we are. That's right. <laughs> and please don't forget to go to our website, thevalleyconnection.net, for all kinds of information to see this show again or any previous shows. Thank you so much for joining us. And please join us next time for more of The, the Valley, Valley Connection. Connection.